What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about something a little different. We're going to be talking about 3D printing and we're going to be talking about Octoprint. So we're going to go over how to install Octoprint, set it up and get all that rolling on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're not familiar, Octoprint is a 3D printing server software. It manages your G-code, it connects to your printer, it manages your printer and gives you a web interface to control and run everything off your printer. It's super useful. I've been using it for a few years now and I love it. It makes it so much easier. And I'm going to show you why right now. So this is the Octoprint web page. So it has a lot of good stuff in here. So we can connect to our printer. So I can connect over here. And my printer is connected over a serial cable to my Raspberry Pi. So now I have control over my printer. I also have where I can store all my files on the local drive. And I can upload files as well. And then I could also see my print. I have a webcam on there. I can watch my G-code layers. I can see the temperatures. I can do a lot. I could also control my print head. So I can move it around if I need, if you know, a print fails or whatever. There's a lot of options and I'm going to show you right now how to set it up. So that's enough about Octoprint for now. Let's get into setting it up. So I am going to work on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus today. Uh, it's one of my old Pis I have laying around. You've seen them on the channel quite a bit. I have used Raspberry Pis for this project before. I believe it's pretty open to use any other kind of SPC. So you can kind of look around, but I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi because it's easiest. So let's get into the setup. So we're just going to go over to Octoprint's website first and just take a quick look. So it has a lot of information. If you're not familiar, you want to read more about it. You know, it gives you more graphics and everything. And then we're going to go look at the download page. And the download page actually has been moved to the Raspberry Pi installer. So it makes it a lot easier than it used to be where you had to get the image and write it on that way. So you can just come over here to grab the Raspberry Pi imager, or we can just Google it and get it that way. If you've done this before, you just got to go through the install and set it up. No big deal. So then from there, we can just open up the Raspberry Pi imager. And there we go. So now I can choose my device. I'm going to choose my Pi 3. We're going to come to other general purpose. Nope. Uh, other specific, sorry. And then we're going to have 3D printed. And under here, there's a couple other ones. But we're going to focus on OctoPi. And then I'm going to do it with the camera stack because I want to set up to use a camera. You could use it either way. If you do want to use a camera, we just do a quick Amazon. And if I look on Amazon, there's a bunch of different camera modules over here you can grab from. I'll have a couple links in the description of ones that I've used, but pretty much any of these will work. And you could use a USB camera if you want, but it is a little trickier sometimes. It doesn't get recognized. So that's why I just use a ribbon cable. This project can also be ran on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Of course, the Pi Zero doesn't have as much computing power as the 3, 4, 5. So kind of, you know, pick your choice of what you want to do. You can run it off of there if you want, but it's going to perform a lot better off a full-size board, like a 3, a 4, or a 5. But let's get back into the setup. So we're back in Raspberry Pi Imager over here, and I've selected my OctoPi with the camera stack. If you're going to do without a camera, you can just do regular. These are both the same versions, so I'm just going to click that. Choose your storage. There is the generic storage device. Make sure you select the right storage device. If you have like an external drive, make sure you don't select that. Make sure you select your micro SD card you want to flash. We're going to click next and then we can edit our settings. So in here, I can change this so it's OctoPi. You can set a username and password. You can configure your Wi Fi if you want, which for me, my printer is in another room, so I don't have a hard cable run into my Raspberry Pi. So I have the Pi running over Wi Fi, but you can have it set up however you want. You could set up your, you know, your location. You would hit save and then you would just hit yes and flash the OS onto the board. And then it's going to set up for what can come on the network and everything else. After you get your SD card all flashed and it has the OS on it, it's super simple. You're going to come over to the back of your Pi. Uh, it might be a little hard to see, but you can see there is this silver slot over here. And your micro SD card is going to slide into there. And then from there, your Pi should be all set to power on and connect to your printer. Your printer should have came with like a serial printer cable. Uh, if not, you're going to have to grab one but it should be like serial to USB or printer cable to USB. You can just take a look in your box if you still have it, or you're gonna have to you know, hit the manufacturer or grab a new one off Amazon or something else. Then from there, you're gonna go connect it to the Raspberry Pi via USB. And then after all that, you can go into the webpage and everything should come up. And then we'll go back and show you what it looks like. So we're back in Octoprint. Now this is mine that's already set up. This is an older version. So if you have a newer version, it might look a little nicer. Um, I forgot the password to this, so I can't log into the Pi and fix it, but that's a different story. But this is Octoprint, and it does have a lot of built-in features. So to start, we have our file storage. 
So instead of going back and forth to your printer with a SD card going, you know, to put it back in and out of the printer and right into it, you could do it right off this web page. So if you have, you know, an STL that you just sliced, you can come over here to upload. And I can just come over here to my folder real quick. And I can come over here and grab my G code and I can grab anything I want and I can upload it into Octoprint. So now it will be available in here. So like if I come over here to the monster truck or how about the Pi KVM? That's a project we were talking about recently. I can come over here and now my G code's right in here and even better, I can make folders for everything. So I have either regular G code that I've worked with or like when I do the Pi Zero camera we talked about, I could split it up so it's in its old folder and I know, you know, what's what. So it's really useful and you could also delete stuff because it does, you know, use your SD card. So I think it has, yeah, it shows it over here how much free space you have in your SD card. So I'm really free on space because these G code files are really small, so it's okay. When you're ready to print something, you could just click on it out of here and then you would just click print. I want to print this right now, so I'm not going to, but it gives you a rough idea of your print time and your filming and everything else. So it tells you the user who sent it. So you have multiple users for your Octoprint, which is okay. It tells you your file name, when it was uploaded to Octoprint, and it tells you the state of the printer. So some useful stuff over here. When you start your print, it's going to come over here and have some temperature. So it's going to tell you your print bed temperature and your hot end temperature. These are good to know because you need to have certain temperatures for your prints. And like I said, we have control over here. Now you are going through the Pi and then back to the printer, so there is a slight delay. But we do have controls over here. So you see I can move my bed. I can move my print head. Uh, let's go the other way. Now I can move it over. So you can see it's moving. I have control over here and I can do what I need. I can extrude filament if I want or I can retract filament. Uh, so I can, I can do that real quick. stop but that's how you can control your printer and you know you see it through here it also has a g-code viewer so when you do have a print going it'll view the g-code there's plugins that you could use to get better visuals of this so like there's pretty g-code and it gives you like a better idea of what it's going to look like so you can see this is what that file that i just put on the printer would look like and it gives you a better representation layer by layer so it's, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little plugin. I'll show you how to add plugins in a minute. There's the terminal, so you can send commands to your printer. And you know, if you know all the print commands, you could do it that way. That was a way that you could set up different functions on your printer. I never really messed with this too much, but it is nice to have sometimes. It does have a built-in time-lapse feature, uh, but I don't use it that way because it doesn't always work as nicely. I usually use Octolapse because it's a little bit nicer. I'll show you how to set the plugins too, but you can set your printer and then how you want to do it and then it will do your time lapses. Probably do a mix between these two. Actually I think I use time lapse more than Octolapse. But that's how you can do it and then it works really nice because you can access Octoprint on your phone and you can download it right over to your phone and you can do whatever with your stuff over there. So that's the basics of Octoprint. I'm going to show you how to do some plugins and then we should be all set with Octoprint and you should be all good to use it and print stuff with your printer. Oh, so here's another thing. So if you come over to the wrench up here on top, you can click on settings and you have all your different options for your printer. So you have your general settings. Usually you're not going to have to change most of this. The only thing you might need to come in here for is for your camera and it's somewhere in here. Like here's Octolapse. You might need to come in here and just set that up. There might be an option for it too, but... You can look through here and figure out what you need to do. Like you have a backup option. I just saw it. Oh, here you go. Classic webcam. So you could set it up over here and you could test it to make sure it's working. In the beginning, you might need to do that just to get your webcam working. But that's really about that. And then we just need to get some plugins and we should be all set to go. Okay. So over here in Octoprint area, like in the tab over here, there's plugin manager. And over here, we can find to add plugins. Now I'm just going to show you some of the plugins that I use. So I use OctoRamp, which is actually a Discord server webhook. So it's really nice because when I'm out of the house, I can't always check in to check on my printer and see what the print status is. And I don't always want to print the VPN up on my phone and then reconnect and do all that. 
So this will actually send Discord notifications of what's going on with my printer. So I'll show you those real quick in a second. So if we come over here, you can actually see here's some of my prints that I've done. And so when you turn on OctoPrint, the server will send a webhook saying that you just woke up and then it'll give you some print statuses. So you can see through here, and this one isn't the best print to show it for, but you can see here's something that's empty and then it's gonna print out. Those were some bed level and squares I did. So here's the start of when I was printing one of the Raspberry Pi cases for the motion eye camera actually. So you can see here it starts off and it sends you an increment, so about 20, 30, 40, and you can see it sends me a picture each time. So I actually see a status of how the print's going, which is really helpful because when I'm out of the house, like I said, I don't want to keep connecting over my VPN to see what's going on to the web portal. And over here, I can just see it really simply. So this is a really nice plugin to have, and it's super simple. You just make a Discord channel, make a webhook, and then put it in the plugin. And I'll show you that real quick. So you would just come in over here and just put the webhook in, and then it would just test it, and then it's all good. And it just sends you the webhooks every, you know, while it prints out. The other one is the Octolapse. This is another one of those time-lapse ones you could do in there. And then there is a regular time-lapse feature in the Octoprint, but I don't know how well it always works. That's why I said I go back and forth between which one I use. But you can come over here to plugins and you could just kind of search through and see what you need. The only thing I would say is to make sure you get like um, genuine plugins. You might want to Google first and then see from there because you don't want to get a malicious plugin and then somebody has control of your printer. You do need to keep in mind that, you know, if your printer is overloaded or somebody tries to overtake it, you know, it could burn down your house, worst case scenario. So just try to vet the plugin before you use it, you know, do a Google search or whatever and double check just because that was always the warnings I always saw when I started printing and using plugins to make sure you get good ones because sometimes, you know, there's people that do bad things out there and you don't want to destroy your printer or destroy your house or whatever else. So just double check your plugins before you install them. So if you want to actually grab a plugin, you just come up here to get more and then you can come through over here and you can figure out what you want to grab and then you would just install. You could also get it from a URL. So like I was saying, you could Google it and then you can come over here and you can just put the URL in and grab the file. So if you know that you want to do this, want to change filament, you would just come over here and install it. Like I said, it's just easier. You can go online. You could read about the plugins first and they also have the plugin repository. So it's a little bit easier to read through and you can just see what's going on. You can also double check to make sure that the plugins you're getting are compatible for your printer because you know there are other models out there. Like I have an AnyCubic printer, so not everything I get is always going to be compatible. So that's really the gist of Octoprint. Um, that's the basics, how to set it up, how to get it going, how to start printing. The only thing other you might want to do is since you have your printer, you can 3D print yourself a case. So you can look for a case specific to your printer. Usually people design them so the Pi can like sit on one of the bars on the side or it mounts nicely so it's out of the way. And if you're going to use a camera module, it also have a feature so you could like click your camera in and it could watch your prints while you go. So you can just check out Thingiverse or 3D Prints or whatever it is, Cold 3D, whatever site you use to figure out the case you want to use the best. And then you could just mount up your Raspberry Pi with Octoprint in your camera and you could manage your prints and watch your prints at the same time. But that's really it. That's how you use Octoprint and set it up. It's a really useful tool. Like I said, I've been using it for years and I love it. It makes life so much easier if you 3D printer to manage and control and just print. So I hope you guys check it out and use it in yours too. So it'd be super helpful. Like I said, I'll have some links down below for some Amazon links with, you know, the parts for the Raspberry Pi and some of the other hardware and stuff I use in my lab. So if you're ever interested, just check out those links below. I'll also have a link to my Discord server. Uh, you can join up in there. You can chat about projects or help each other with work we're doing. And I appreciate everybody for watching. If you could drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.